Man, folks, it's Monday, which means it's Pixel Day. That's right. It means it's Pixel Day. We get to finally talk about the made by Google Pixel 6 Pro. Now, if you missed the event last week, I have a link down in the description below for that event. But first off, shout out to Team Pixel for sending out this review unit to your boy. We have been under an embargo, so haven't really been able to talk about it up until today. But I got a few things that I need to talk about with this device. But I will go ahead and say this right now. You might click off after I say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. This phone is awesome. Let's go ahead and get into the video. And I'm going to tell you the top three takeaways after several days with this phone and the two annoyances that I have with it. Cue that intro. What's up, everybody? Tech King Mike. I'm back again with another video. And yes, like I said, Google Pixel 6 Pro. Now, I was blessed to be able to get the sort of sunny color, that a color that I initially didn't think that I would enjoy, but has actually grown on me quite a bit since I got it, and I'm really enjoying it. Now, like I said, we're going to talk about three things that I love about this phone, and we're going to talk about two things that I kind of am a little annoyed with. And they're all software related as far as the annoyances are concerned, so hopefully they can be fixed. Now, starting with the good. First good thing that I really enjoy about the Pixel 6 Pro is the screen. Now, I gotta be completely honest. I haven't used the Pixel as far as a main, like, big Pixel since the 3XL. That was the last time that I owned a large Pixel. That video is on the channel. And it was okay, but that big old notch kind of made it uncomfortable. You know, it was just, I didn't really care for it too much, and I ended up returning it. Now, I did also use the Pixel 3a XL, I had the 4a 5G, and I also had the 5a 5G, also sent out by Team Pixel, gift, by, gift from Google, thank you very much. Now, this the reason I love the screen on this one is not because of the waterfall display, it's not because of you know the fact that it's as big as it is, it's because it's quad HD and a variable 120 hertz refresh rate. Now what I did was I went into the developer settings and I just went on ahead and just made it a pure 120 hertz the whole time and it is so buttery smooth. Now I have enjoyed quite a few devices this year from an S21 Ultra to the OnePlus 9 Pro, the uh, Galaxy Z Fold 3 and I iPhone 13 Pro Max and now we're on the Pixel as far as Android is concerned and this one has been one of the smoothest to me. Now it's not beating, just kind of keep it honest, it's not beating an S21 Ultra but it is pretty damn good. So the screen gets the first nod for first takeaway with this device, I'm a fan. Second thing that I'm really enjoying with this phone so far has got to be the battery. Now I know Right now, the 13 Pro Max iPhone is the battery king, at least for me it is. But this thing is a extremely close second. Now, I was able to go to work last night. That's right. Last night, I went to work at 7 p.m. Sunday, and I got home at 7.30 a.m. this morning on Monday. That's how dedicated I am to you guys because I love y'all. When I got home today, this thing was still on about 15 to 20 percent. Took it off the charger at around 530. For reference, the iPhone would have been around 30 to 35 percent. So that's not too far off. It's about a good 10 percent difference, but I'm not mad at it. I would not be able to get that out of the Galaxy S21 Ultra, the Galaxy Z Fold 3, even out of the Pixel 5a 5G. It just didn't happen. So the fact that this is a full featured flagship device with Quad HD 120 Hertz running, and I'm getting the battery out of it that I'm getting, I am thoroughly impressed. So, and the phone is still learning my habits. That's the crazy thing. But keep, pay attention and keep the battery in the back of your head because we're gonna talk about that here in just a second. And the third and final thing that I wanna make sure that I convey to you guys to take away is that this truly feels like a premium flagship. This feels like a Get, I can't I can't describe to you how it feels until you go actually mess with one and see one for yourself. But for years now, people have said they wanted to have stock Android on Galaxy device hardware. And this feels like the culmination of that, except better. This is a 6.7 inch display. This is a glass stainless steel frame. You have the camera bar on the back with the triple camera setup. And yet it's a light phone. It's a solid phone. It feels very well made. I really feel like Google really went all out to make sure that not only did you get the flagship experience software wise, you got the flagship experience hardware wise. And I'm a fan. This feels very premium, feels very worth the money. And considering the fact that it starts at $899, it's just, it, it's just icing on the cake for me. Now, let's talk about the two negatives that I have after the last several days with this phone. Now, 
full disclosure, got this phone on Thursday. So Thursday through today, these are the only two things that I've been able to find that have really just kind of like stood out to me as annoyances. And that is an issue I have with the settings where I'm not able to actually access my battery settings. I have to search for the battery settings and then tap on whatever one I want individually. I can't just go to my settings and tap battery. So that is kind of frustrating. I know that that may just be with the oh, you know, the software that's on the device. It could possibly be updated once like, you know, the retail software is available or whatever, but it is something that is quite frustrating because I wanted to see what's eating my battery. I wanted to see, you know, my battery usage and things like that. And I kind of have to go through this workaround to do it. I can still do it, but it's the fact that I have to go through the workaround that just kind of frustrates me a little bit. And the last thing that I will say is a slight annoyance, but it is getting better. And shout out to Google because I think that their AI in the Tensor chip is credit for this getting better, I should say. But the in-display fingerprint scanner has, it started off very meh. Now coming from an ultrasonic scanner on the Galaxy S21 Ultra, on the Galaxy S20, on the Note 10 Plus, Note 20 Ultra, coming from the ultrasonic scanners that I've used in the past, and even scanners that I've used uh, on the OnePlus 9 Pro and other devices, optical scanners, this one is very it's, it's sluggish in a way. Now it gets better and it has been getting better with time. So when I do my full review, we'll come back to this video and we'll see if it's gotten any better. But I can honestly say that it is kind of just been a little frustrating getting used to it. Now, the one good thing that I will say is that again, shout out to my good friend, Barry Johnson, the difference between this optical scanner and other optical scanners that I've used in the past on different devices is that I can add multiple fingerprints. Now I know with OnePlus devices of, of the past and I know with other devices that I've used that I've used previously, you could not add more than one fingerprint with optical scanners. But with this one, you can. So shout out to Google for the fact that I'm able to do that because what I ended up doing was I registered my thumbprint three times and that significantly improved performance. So between the settings issue and between the fingerprint scanner, you know, kind of starting off a little rough, those are the two takeaways that I have as far as like just about the device. But we're gonna get really deep and heavy into this device. We have another video dropping tomorrow and that's gonna be a review or comparison between this phone and the 13 Pro Max. So make sure you're subscribed so that you can catch that video when it comes out tomorrow. But for now, this is just a quick impressions, thoughts on the Pixel 6 Pro after the first several days of usage with it. Stay tuned for the whole week for Pixel content, man. We're going to be dropping it every single day. So I hope you guys enjoyed what you see. And if you did, consider dropping a like and subscribe to the channel. Comment down below. Are you hyped for the Pixel 6 Pro? Are you excited that you ordered one on release day? I know there was a lot of issues with the website, but I know Best Buy and B&H had giveaways going on and they kind of stepped up where Google failed. I am on the wait list for the Stormy Black 512 because I want one for myself. I want to buy an actual Pixel because I want to just have another one for myself because I feel like I feel like my wife is going to end up taking this one from me at some point. But with that being said, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Like I said, stay tuned for more content on the Pixel 6 Pro and I'll catch y'all in the next video. Stay safe. Be blessed. Peace.